Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have something very special to share with all of you. And I also have a giveaway to thank you for being my loyal subscribers and viewers. There are actually six giveaways sponsored by Colorado Craft Company. And I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. So make sure you watch until the very end. Today I have an utter pleasure to introduce you to a new stamp company called Colorado Craft Company. They are new to me as well, and I was delighted to learn a little bit more about them and get to play with their products. I have three cards to share with you featuring their new big and bold stamp line, the new designs for July 2019. These designs are available exclusively at simonsessstamp.com for the first two days after the launch, so July 3rd and July 4th, and after that, on July 5th, they will also become available on the Colorado Craft Company's website. I have links to all of these places in my video description down below in case you'd like to check these stamps out. These stamp sets do have a bit of a higher price point, but they are larger in size and they are very practical for those who like to color. Each of the big and bold sets feature one large size image that easily takes up the entire space of an A2 card. And the stamp sets also have a number of coordinating sentiments done in various styles to complement the image. As I'm holding these in my hand, you can see how the images compare to an A2 card. That white card base that I have behind the stamp set is cut exactly to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so an A2 card. The images in these have a lot of detail to them, and I found that to be extremely helpful when it comes to coloring them. I love to color, but I'm not an expert at any kind of coloring, so I try to get all the help I can get, and having that detail in these images is very practical. I have three sets from this series. The sweetest birthday cone is the one with the ice cream, birthday cake is the one with the cake, and the sweet friend cupcake is the one with the cupcake. Because of the size of these images, you have the freedom to really go to town with your favorite coloring mediums and add as many details as you like. You also have a lot of room to dress up your cards or images with additional mediums and add in more detail with a white pen, for example, or glossy accents, or even some glitter for a nice sugary finish on these. I love the look of pop art, and so this has inspired me to use the kind of colors and the type of coloring for these cards to make them look like pop art. I'm going to show you how I made one card from start to finish, but all three cards were created in the same way. I started by stamping the image outline in alcohol marker friendly ink on white paper. I'm stamping on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and using Hero Arts Intense Black ink. Because this image is so large, I'm also stamping it with the help of my Misty stamping tool and I'm double stamping it to have crisp black outlines. You can see how big the image is and it is actually slightly cut off at the top and bottom on this card. If you like to make tall and skinny cards, this ice cream would work well for that. My coloring medium of choice these days is alcohol markers. In fact, I just got some reinkers for my stash and now I can really go all out when it comes to coloring with my markers. A few years ago, I was so intimidated by Copic coloring, I would only color the tiniest images where it was literally impossible to do any shading or, or blending. So it was more like coloring using just one marker and adding little tiny bits of color. In fact, I was at a crafty retreat a couple of years back and we got all to talk about Copic markers and refills. And I said, I have never ever refilled my markers. And the girls I was chatting with all looked at my card, uh, the card that I was coloring at the time. And it had like a bunch of teeny tiny houses where you literally can't blend anything because there's just no room to do that. So they all looked at the card and they said, well, no wonder the images you're coloring are so tiny. These markers will last you a lifetime. Fast forward two or three years, I can't remember how long it's been now. 
but I am now a lot more confident when it comes to coloring larger areas or larger images with my Copics. And in fact, I reach for those markers more often now than I reach for any other coloring medium in my craft room. I still consider myself a beginner when it comes to Copics, but little by little, and especially coloring images like these, I feel I'm getting a little better each time. That being said, I know a lot of you are intimidated by coloring. It doesn't matter what coloring medium it is, it's just scary, and I get it. It's still scary for me at times as well. But I do not let the fear of messing up stop me from having fun and enjoying the process. You know, so what if I don't color it perfectly? It's not a race. It's not a competition. It's a pleasant pastime. It's meant to help you relax and unwind, forget about your problems, and just do something to enjoy yourself. I actually colored all three of those cards one day after work. I work until 11 p.m., sometimes even longer. So my workday ended, and I spend the next three hours just coloring. It was 2 a.m. when I finally decided to call it a night and go to sleep, but otherwise I probably would have stayed up a lot longer just playing with my markers. And it was good for my soul too. I needed that coloring time. While I was chatting, I've already colored a good half of this image. The marker colors I used are the following, R39, R27, R24, R22 and R20 for the cherry. And this is what I mean here. The image is so big, I have a lot of room to color properly, to go from light to medium to dark, then to medium to light again. There's room to use more than one or two or three colors and really practice those coloring skills. To help me color these images, because let's be honest, half the time I have no clue how to color things, I went on Pinterest and I looked up colored images of ice cream, of cupcakes, and of cake slices. It was very helpful to see how other people have colored similar images in the past, and that gave me some ideas in regards to my coloring here. I also used C3, C1, and 0 colorless blender markers to color the frosting. I wanted it to look white, but it's always best to add some sort of shading to the white areas as white is never really truly white. You have some sections that are darker and those were shaded with the C1 and C3 markers on this image. Next, the ice cream cone was actually my favorite part to color. I tried a new color combination for me. I used E33, E31, and E51 markers here. By the way, if you need help getting started with some Copic marker color combinations, I have a special video for you where I show how I made a chart to list all of my favorite Copic marker color combos. And I also list those color combos for you if you'd like to try them. I have that video linked here in the cards and in the video description below. Coloring the ice cream cone was a real treat because this part of the image already has all of the detail in it. I just needed to come in with the marker and accentuate those details. I did leave a big chunk white, free from any coloring, as that was my highlight for this particular part of the image. I used to not know about this trick and I would never know how to properly make a highlight on my colored images. One day, out of the blue, I just decided to not color a highlight at all instead of using the lightest color marker like I did in the past, and that worked beautifully. I think that's actually the way that it is supposed to be done, so not using any marker on the highlight area at all. I also used a YG03 to color the stem on the cherry. You can't really see it because it's so skinny, but still I wanted to add some color there as well. The next part, coloring the actual ice cream was the most intimidating part for me as I did not know where, how, what, but I just gave it a try and I loved the result. I used a lot of markers here, RV 19, 17, 14, 13, 11, and 10. So how many of that? Six markers. I began by mapping out the lightest areas the highlights with the lightest marker, and from there I just moved slowly to darker markers, adding in the shadows one by one and deepening those shadows on the image. 
Many times I thought that I had messed it up, but I kept at it and it turned out fine in the end. I mean, I love it. Let me know in the comments below if you like it. Now, in my videos, I usually like to tell how long something took me to color, as it's often hard to tell as videos are sped up and the time seems unrealistic. To color this ice cream, it took me, take a guess, it took me 13 minutes. Yep, that's not scary at all. That's very doable. And had I needed to color a couple of these, if I were to make birthday invitations, for example, I probably would have colored those because it's very doable. Now to achieve that pop art look, I also colored the background on my images. This is not something everyone likes to do for various reasons. Some people like a white background. Some people don't like to use all of the marker ink to color the background and some just don't have the time. I personally love a non-white background. Here are the two cards side by side. One I finished last night with a light blue background and one I just colored with a white background. I'd love to know which background you prefer. Is it white or is it colored? The card I colored yesterday used a B00 marker for the background. For this card, I decided to go a bit lighter and used a B000 marker. It was a little bit dry at first, so I paused and quickly refilled it before I colored the background. And when your marker is nice and juicy, it doesn't take long at all to color a large area on a card. I do like to use the chisel nib of my marker for speedy coloring, and then I just come back with a brush nib and add more color next to the stamped outline. Finally, to finish the card, I stamped my sentiment. It reads, sending sweet wishes your way. I overlapped the ice cream quite a bit to have a one layer card. I also used a white Sakura pen in size eight and 10 to add some white dots to the image. They add a nice touch to the finished card. And I used a white pen to color over the black outline that marks the highlight of the cherry. Now let's talk giveaway. I have six stamp sets to give away to six of you. There are three sets that I've shown in this video, plus the three sets from the Lovely Legs series that you see on the screen right now. To enter the giveaway, please head over to my blog. There is a link in the video description below. You need to subscribe to my blog newsletter. You can find the subscription form in that blog post and comment on the blog, letting me know which of the cards I shared today you liked the most. I'll pick winners over the weekend on July 6th or 7th and will email you if you won. Love you guys. I'll see you next week.